the 1920s, scientists gradually understood why the sun shines and what is happening inside of it. Nuclear fusion. The sun largely consists of a plasma of simple hydrogen. Every second about 600 million tons of hydrogen get turned into 595 million tons of helium. This is because the high temperatures there cause light hydrogen atomic nuclei to fuse into heavy helium nuclei. Since the mass of newer helium nuclei is smaller than the two hydrogen nuclei that came before, this difference in mass is released as energy. And this happens in huge quantities. We are talking about an output of about 20 quadrillion nuclear power plants. Of course, scientists quickly recognize the energy potential that lies behind nuclear fusion. In a nuclear fusion reactor, one gram of fuel is said to produce as much energy as 11 tons of coal. This is why every effort is being made to make nuclear fusion possible. Here in Germany as well. There has been some rather promising news in the field of nuclear fusion recently, but now dramatic headlines are coming up predicting the end of the largest nuclear fusion project. Today we are going to find out what's going on and why it might be a good news. So welcome to the German Science Guy, my name is Jacob and here in Germany we say Los geht's. ITER, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, is actually considered the great hope. It's a project involving 33 nations including the EU, the UK, the United States, China and several others. ITER was intended primarily as a test laboratory to get to grips with the major challenges of nuclear fusion and pave the way for the first large-scale demonstration power plant. The aim was to have the whole thing running by 2035, but due to production errors the schedule cannot be met. In the meantime, billions of euros have already been invested in ITER and thousands of scientists and engineers have been working on it. The pressure on the project is slowly increasing, not only because of the many technical difficulties, but also because now there is a strong competition coming up as well as other technologies. Let's take a quick look at what the difficulty of nuclear fusion actually is. The first challenge is to fuse two positive atomic nuclei that actually repel each other. For this to work, the nuclei have to fly towards each other at a very high speed and this can only work at extreme temperatures or pressure. We're talking about 100 to 200 million degrees in the replica here on Earth, the hydrogen isotopes deuterium and tritium are generally used for fusion. Deuterium consists of a proton and a neutron. Tritium consists of one proton and two neutrons. Adding energy creates a plasma. The atoms get broken up and the electrons and hydrogen ions move separately. This brings us to the next challenge. The plasma must be enclosed or held together. This is because no material could withstand such high temperatures. In addition, the plasma would cool down by getting in contact with the walls. That would stop the nuclear fusion process. There are different approaches to solving these problems. As there are charged particles in the plasma, it can be confined by strong magnetic fields, among other things. This is a classical approach that has been already used in the 1950s. The best known concept is probably the tokamak. The tokamak looks like a donut. Several coils generate the required magnetic field. There are several of these reactors around the world. These including the JET, the Joint European Taurus, the world's largest fusion experiment. JET succeeded in releasing energy through nuclear fusion for the first time in 1991. The ITER is considered to be the successor project and said to be larger as well. ITER is also based on tokamak technology but uses superconducting magnetic coils. However, the tokamak has one disadvantage. The transformer inside of it does not continuously generate electricity. It has to discharge in between so fusion can only happen in spurts. Therefore, it is difficult to achieve continuous operation with tokamak power plants. However, attempts are being made to change this using high frequency waves. Another very well known approach is the stellarator. The stellarator also generates magnetic fields, but the whole thing works without an electric current in the plasma, only with a coil system. The stellarator uses two magnetic fields, a ring-shaped one in the center and a second one generated by external coils. To ensure that the magnetic field is sufficient, the magnetic coils have a slightly more complicated shape, as you can see in the picture. Unlike the tokamak, the stellarator is suitable for continuous operation because it is not dependent on the transformer coil inside of the donut. As the geometry of the tokamak is simpler and the magnetic field is more stable, this variant was initially chosen for ITER, even though a stellarator is in fact more suitable for a fusion power plant. The German test reactor Wendelstein 7X, which is operated by the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics, aims to prove that this is the case. 50 superconducting magnetic coils are used to create a super complex magnetic field. The test reactor achieved a world record with its fusion product back in 2018. After further modifications, a new record was set at the beginning of last year. The reactor ran for 8 minutes at 1.3 gigajoules. 
This also serves as a model for the German startup Proxima Fusion, among others, which also uses a Stellarator and wants to go into operation in the early 2030s. This means that Stellarators are tough competition for Tokamak projects such as Eater, and we often hear that they are better because earlier problems such as maintaining plasma confinement at high temperatures have now been solved. The progress in Stellarators certainly raised the question of whether Eater is now redundant or simply too late. However, there are also other approaches that I would like to quickly present. On the one hand, there are many companies that work with the magnetic confinement principle and want to use and optimize the Tokamak system, for example, with even better high temperature superconductors. Another startup relies on boron and protons instead of tritium and deuterium. The advantage you can do without tritium, which is difficult to extract and has a short half-life. Another well-known startup is General Fusion and they are backing a different horse. They are trying to optimize the reactor wall so that the interaction between the wall and the plasma is no longer so problematic. To do this, they want to enclose the plasma in liquid metal. In principle, their fusion technology is also based on the tokamak, but I would describe it as a new version of it. The approach to small projectiles is completely different. I've already made a long video about this in German. If you want an English version of this, please comment this. But here is the principle in short. They use magnets to shoot small aluminum discs at a small cube containing an air bubble with deuterium and tritium. The extreme speed of 20 kilometers per second create a shock wave that destroys the disc and the cube and triggers such extreme pressure that a hydrogen plasma is created, which then enables nuclear fusion. This technology relies on inertial fusion. The plasma is being held together by its own inertia, which is why you don't need an extra magnetic field to hold it together. And there's one last variant that also uses inertial fusion, but works with lasers to compress and heat the fuel strongly enough. There has been a big breakthrough where they created more energy with the fusion than the laser beam had. But many headlines got this wrong because the laser still needed more energy for operation than the reaction generated. So no, we did not solve the problem of generating energy with fusion, but we came closer. And actually, I just visited a very interesting German fusion project with lasers who tested their concept with the strongest laser in the world in Romania. It has 10 petawatt. There will also be a video about that pretty soon. But what does this have to do with the abandonment of the largest nuclear fusion project ever? In fact, the trigger for this is a new record with laser technology. And that has raised the question, what is ITER still good for? After all, it was supposed to be the foundation of our future in nuclear fusion. But now for the first time, some scientists have said that it is no longer a prerequisite for an experimental reactor. The first major plasma experiment can now probably take place in 2034 instead of 2025. And even this is not certain. This is of course very frustrating, which is why a global change of course seems to be underway. Not only the United States, but also Germany is now developing the laser technology alternative that is being successfully run at the NIF. The Federal Ministry of Education and Research has drawn up its own research strategy in this area. And Eurofusion is also calling for an overarching change. ITER is no longer to serve as a model for the first demonstration experiment, but, and I find this somewhat promising, considering the success of inertial confinement fusion, the Stellarator concept is being considered instead. Wendelstein 7X would be a good foundation, and Germany would have a large share in the development. Apart from this, a small test facility is now to be built independently of ITER, which will be able to produce the tritium cycle. This would also be an important step for the nuclear power prototype. Incidentally, the test facility is to be in European hands because one of the main problems with ITER also seems to be that there are simply too many parties that can and want to have a say. Well, that's pretty big news and it has to be said openly that there are of course voices saying that ITER is not such a bad thing as their findings from it can also support other projects and I would definitely support this. My personal opinion here is that this is pretty good news for now because even if you don't know what is true in the end, the mere fact that there is such a loud discussion in the scientific community and this is based on the results from inertial confinement fusion shows that this is really great progress. I find it complicated to assess how to proceed with ITER and I don't yet know what my final thoughts are. Just a thought from me on this, which is not directly from me either, but from Rolf Dobelli who wrote The Art of Clear Thinking and who talks there about the sunken cost fallacy, where money has already been spent so you hold on things because you've already put a notable amount of money and effort into it. I think you shouldn't make that mistake, but as I said, this is not a final opinion on ITER, just a thought. 
but what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments and here you can find a video about the most important machine in the world that also has to do something with lasers.